Let's have a look at cos x for a second. Here's y equals cos x. Here's my copy of it. Now, cos x is lovely, right? We only had to draw the regular domain, not to 2 pi 4. Why is that? Why is this so much nicer to deal with inside x? It was. Yeah. Great. When you look at the stationary points, the turning points, I should say, the turning points are what cause the problems, right? Everything's looking good here for a long time, all the way through all the acute angles and all the obtuse angles. That's a very natural way to look at things. And then, of course, you stop because you've got a turning point. Okay? So highlight with me 0 to pi. Naught. Just like before, you don't need to say the case that doesn't work, but cos x has no inverse function. Cos x in this domain does have an inverse function. So we define this as the domain that gives you back cos inverse. So I can say y equals cos x in a different domain from 0 to pi. That has an inverse function, and that's what we define as cos inverse. Okay. Okay, now I want you to pause for a second and have a look at the top right hand side of the board. What are those guys? What are they? You recognize them, right? They're the sine rule and the cosine rule, right? Now we learned both of those in the context of like what kinds of problems could we solve with the sine rule and the cosine rule that we couldn't solve before? What did these let us do? Triangles? A specific kind of triangle. Yeah, triangles that don't have right angles. We started sine, cos, and tan from writing the triangles, and then as soon as we were out of there, we were like, mm, kind of stuck, and that's why we had to develop these. Okay. What specifically can you find with the sine rule or the cosine rule? What kinds of things would we evaluate? What kinds of things? Like the height of the tower. Yeah, good. So you can find a length, right? Or alternatively, you can find an angle. Those are the pieces in here, right? If you've got, say for instance, um, two sides and an angle, right? So long as they're in the right configuration, they're opposing each other and so on, you can find the angle that's missing, right? What about this one? What would I need if I wanted to find an angle here? Three sides. Look carefully. Three sides. Yeah, I need all three sides, right? Because if I don't have all three, I don't know, like, three sides is what gives me congruence. So I know exactly which triangle it is because I've got all three sides, right? So therefore I know exactly which angle. Now, we kind of view them as very synonymous because they both can solve the same thing. I can rearrange either of these to find sides instead of angles, okay? But we established that these two are not the same. The cosine rule is clearly superior for solving those kinds of problems. Why? In this context, why? Yeah, Nikita. I'm not sure if this is right, but I think once you talked about how there was like we were using the sine rule for a question, but you said that because we weren't relating like one triangle to another triangle. So is it because cos includes like like all three angles as opposed to just talking mm -hmm. about two like two sides rather than like because you need all three of them. Okay, sides. good, good, good. The short answer is yes, but you've actually come at it from another angle, so I'm going to come back to your point if that's okay. Right? The problem was, if you use the sine rule, you actually can get the angle wrong. You can get the wrong angle. Okay? You can find the acute angle when actually it was obtuse because you're looking at the wrong triangles. It has to do with the fact that, um, you know how we say? When you've got two sides and an angle, if you don't have them included, then you're in trouble. And it's the same thing with the sine rule. If you don't have them in the right spot, then yeah, you just make them ask yourself, right? Okay, we've established this before. Now have a look at the inverse trig functions and you can see where the problem arises, right? This guy, when you reverse him, he doesn't know which of these angles you mean because they'll always give you the same value back, right? And he can't ever. He, he can't. He's limited by the nature of sine. Whereas cosine never has this problem, right? The biggest angles you can get are naught to pi because the angle sum of the triangle, of course, is? Right. Yes, okay. So therefore, no matter how big that angle is, it's going to be somewhere in here. Whereas, triangles all around the world have angles of this size and this size and this size. Okay. So you see, this is explaining why the cosine rule is always better and why the ambiguous case exists. It's because you don't have a choice when you define it. Right. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've established this. I want you to note, though, like you need to have this picture in your head. When I first was um, learning these, when I was in year 12, I didn't understand what was going on. So all I did was I took this and I took this. And I said, okay, I'll just remember them. Whoop. 
problem do you think I encountered when I took those two boxes without the pictures and just said memorize? What problem do you think I encountered? I swapped them. I swapped them, right? So when I was doing, I could never remember, like, oh, which one's my Depire 2? Depire 2. And I had no reference sheet, right? So I had all kinds of problems here. If you have the picture in your head, you can see why I can do this, right? It's about turning points. And if you have the picture in your head, you can see why you have to do this weirdo domain. It's because of the turning points. Right, let's finish the drawings. Um, where did you draw 10x? I need red. Where did you draw it? What domain? Between minus pi and pi. Yeah, you match the domain of sine, don't you? But it's for a different reason. What was the reason this time? Yeah, how many turning points does 10 have? Answer? No. None. None, right? So I've got this guy. By the way, again, because you know from our work in radian measure, what's the gradient of tan x at the origin? It's one. So you should be able to draw that 45 degree line through there. But you've got these guys. <laughs> what are the equations of my asymptotes? Yep. X equals, that's right. And x equals pi two. So in between here, we're good, we're happy, okay? So I'm, I'm not going to write it again. You've got this guy over here, except it's 10x, but it's the same domain. Does that make sense? And it so doesn't equal. Correct. As opposed to this one where you can get to our minus pi and two and pi and two, that was the whole point of me drawing out my asymptotes in. The one difference is that you don't have those border lines, okay? So our domain here is pi and two not inclusive. Okay. So there are all of our drawings of the regular tree functions. We need three more drawings to accompany them. The three drawings that are kind of implied here. Which three? The, like the cot, the cosec. Oh yeah, kind of. We actually can do them. They're going to take us while, so I'm not going to do them now. Yeah, the actual inverses, right? We define them, but we don't know what they look like, okay? Now it's not difficult. I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to wander around and Miss Burke will as well to have a look at how you're going. Again, do that trick. Retain. Do the reflection. It's very easy to get the, um, the actual concavity or all that kind of thing wrong because we're, we're used to drawing it like this. Okay, everything's going to be reversed. So take some time, draw these nice and big so that you can um, make sure that the curvature is accurate. And once you've got those, I'm going to write some questions for 1B that you'll be able to do with the help of these definitions. Okay?